care to chat? Hello and welcome to our podcast from the Northern Ireland Social Care Council. Social care and social work are such enormously important parts of life here. They really came to the fore during the pandemic and now with the whole crisis in the health service, they're in the news again. So in these podcasts, we're finding out about these jobs, about the people who work in them, the routes into social care and social work, how staff can progress and develop their careers, about the reforms taking place and very importantly, how people in these fields take care of themselves as well as their clients. And it's those clients we're focusing on today. This is Killian's story, when health and social care gets personal. With me are Killian, who's 11, just, his mum, Tricia, and Rhonda Knox, the community support worker for the family. And it's so good of you all to come and join us here today, especially you, Killian. And Tricia, tell us a bit about Killian. Now, we don't want him to be blushing, but uh, tell us about, about him, his talents and his needs and his gifts. Killian is 11, as you just said, Wendy, and um, he ha- he's on the ASD spectrum. And Killian is so creative, talented, and he's a brilliant cook. He's great at art. He's now doing origami, um, cooking. He's just a great boy. Um, Killian does suffer from anxiety and um, a lot of sensory issues but he he's trying his best to overcome them and he's doing really well um one very proud mummy um and yeah he's he he has special amazing talents and it's it, he's it's like every day he's coming out with something else something new that he just continues to amaze me all the time so what sort of support do you and and your son receive? I um Killian gets once a fortnight what um Rhonda comes out and now we've had Killian is very clingy to me as a parent and socially we we were finding it difficult to get Killian to sort of mix with other children and he's had a really rough time at school. He was bu- bullied and We've moved him now. We've moved him to schools, but he's doing absolutely amazing in his new school. But the fear of meeting other children, the fear of the social aspect is like as soon as school finishes, Killian didn't want to interact with anybody. So now it, it has been a slow process, but for the first time last week, Killian went and played basketball with Rhonda. Killian was always doing um, arts and crafts at home with Rhonda. Rhonda would have played basketball outside the home with Rhonda, or with, with Killian, sorry. And, you know, we, we, Killian's baby rabbits, we rabbits, and Rhonda helps. Rhonda was up and looks at the rabbits with him. He makes Christmas, we made Christmas decorations um, and arts and crafts. And slowly, very slowly but surely, Killian's co- come in there and he went out, as I said last week, with two other boys and played basketball and he came home smiling. And that was a massive big step. For me personally, Positive Futures is a, it has been a lifeline for me as a parent because for the first time I felt that I'm not doing things wrong. I thought it was something, was I not doing enough as a parent I'm a single parent, wasn't sure, um, nobody really to bounce off, nobody really to speak to about um, the struggles. Um, Obviously, ASD, as as Killian gets older, presents different challenges, which when I went to Positive Futures talking to other parents, it was like, oh, my daughter or my son does that. and, And it's like asking them their feedback and the support that I get from the service as well. Um, It's like it's somebody to fight my corner. It's somebody, you know, when it comes to doing the statement of special educational needs, it's advice, it's it's just a lifeline. that It's somebody that I never had to talk to before. A Um, listening ear. A listening ear. 
It was almost like a crutch for me. I also found out about Killian's new school through the group, through one of the parents who also had a child with special needs going to the same school. And she actually works in the school part time and will always let me know how Killian's getting on. And it's just it's just like a family. And I love seeing these women and I love seeing Donna. And Donna calls to me with feed. I give my, give my feedback and Donna gives her feedback. And Rhonda is fantastic. So she is. And she's a great asset to the service. Well, I'm going to hear from Rhonda in just a wee minute. But before I ask Rhonda anything, basketball now... Um, your mummy was saying that uh, you've been playing basketball with Rhonda Killian and I hear you beat her, did you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you enjoy basketball? Yeah, I've been playing for three years now. And what about your new school? Your mum says it's great and that you're doing really well there. Yeah. What What do you like about it? Um, I like it because in my other uh, past schools there's only been really, like, um, soccer and Gaelic football and stuff like that. But in the school, there's basketball and other different sports for other kids that um, don't play them sports. And Rhonda, your support worker, uh, we're going to hear from her in just a wee minute, but um, do you like seeing your support worker? Um, Sometimes, yeah. It kind of depends on, like, um, what kind of day it is, like, what I'm feeling like, if I'm feeling lonely, I like seeing my support worker and all. And what sort of things do you do together? Um, Like, basketball and arts and crafts and stuff like that. And you like those. I mean, did I hear you had taken up origami? Yeah. So what kind of things, what have you been folding? Is that the right way to put it? Is that the... Is that the... <laughs> yeah. Um... I kind of started out by just wanting to make a paper boat and then I just made, I used YouTube tutorials and all to make other stuff like paper airplanes and stuff like that. But now I'm doing 3D origami where you like, so you cut these tiny squares out of paper and then you fold them into little pieces and then combine loads of pieces to make like swans and stuff like that. Lovely. And you use YouTube to help you with your cooking too, don't you? Yeah. So what have you been cooking? Um, I'd say I cook meringues the most and stuff like that. I heard you cooked your mummy meringues for her birthday. Yeah, and it. So my my two sisters distracted her with um. She, my two sisters distracted her. And so she was waiting up in bed all day. So um, she came. I was planning this for a while and I said to mummy that, oh, oh no, I forgot to make the breakfast. But then whenever she came downstairs, I had all the breakfast and stuff made. Lovely. Well, what a, what a special treat. And they were meringue kisses, I think, weren't they? Yeah, meringues, French toast, crepes, mini donuts and stuff like that. Terrific. Goodness, I think I might come to your house for breakfast. Would that be OK? <laughs> it sounds lovely. Rhonda, you obviously enjoy your visits with Killian and the, uh, the different activities that you can do with him, despite the fact that he can now beat you at basketball. Yeah, I don't think that would be too hard. But no, he's... Killian is so skilled at basketball. He can do all the moves where you bounce the ball underneath your legs and he can just play rings around me, no bother. And I'm not great at getting the hoops in, but he's great at getting the hoops. So tell me a bit about what you do and your role uh, in, in helping with Killian and with the family. Um, well, my role, I'm, I'm classed as a community support worker. Um, so my aim is to support the child as much as we can. So we take them out and try and get them interested um, in new ideas, new skills. And also I want them to come out and integrate into the community and meet other kids that have the, the same problems as themselves, just, just not maybe fitting in. And it just shows them that there's a whole world of us out there that sometimes feel like we don't fit in, 
but the world would be a very boring place if we were all the same. So we all we all have to have our different ideas and bring something to the table. And like I say, Killian's fantastic. Um, we played a game of basketball. He was able to come in and meet two other children that were there in support. And they instantly just clicked together, played as a team, was passing the ball, sharing the ball, um, all those things that he thought that he wasn't able to do. And he'd done it instantly. And I was so proud of him. So proud of him. How did you get into social care yourself? Um, for me, getting into social care, I was a chef all my life. And after COVID, um, I just didn't feel like I wanted to go back to that. So I thought to myself, I want to do something that's rewarding, something that I'm helping. And my three kids had grown up and left home. So I thought to myself, you know, I want to do something. So I've seen the advertisement for Positive Futures and I thought, I'll give this a wee, I'll go to see. So because we'd done my interview and I said, look, I'm really just interested. I love arts and crafts. I could do them from morning to night. I love cooking. I says, I love getting out and seeing around me. I like doing, going to the pool. And I says, I, I really don't know if I would suit this job or not, but I says, I'd like to give it a go. Um, so that's where how I got into, I joined up then with uh, Brighter Futures. Um, and honest to goodness, the days my heart does be swelling because I'd be so proud of them, how far they can come in a few times out. Um, you get some days that we have tough days. We get days that we sometimes just don't feel like doing things. But the, we get, the rewards are a lot more, they outweigh the days that we, the bad days. There's more good days than bad days. And like I say, Killian, Killian has been really great. I was so proud of him. We went for ice cream. He didn't tell you that. We went for ice cream and then we went around the pet shop as well before we went to play basketball. So he was a busy boy that day. And did the two, do you talk with Rhonda about cooking? I mean, how handy to have someone who's chef when you like cooking so much, Killian? Mm-hmm. Has she given you some good tips? Yeah. Like what, for instance? Um, not really sure. <laughs> have you given her some good tips? <laughs> I bet you have. I think, yeah. yeah, I think I pick up more from Killian than he picks up from me. We were talking about cheesecake, weren't we, with Mum coming up in the car? We thought we could try making a cheesecake someday. Yeah. Well, that sounds good. You crush all those biscuits up and have a nice pudding, have a nice dessert for your mummy. And your sisters, do they like e eating the food that you make too? Um, well, my older sister's 23, so she's moved out. And, well, sometimes, uh, sometimes my sister eats the food. Sometimes she, she just wouldn't eat the food. <laughs> she's definitely missing out there, I think, by the sound of things. I mean, Tricia... What sort of difference would you say that, that having the social care help has made to, to you and, and your family? I mean, you, you talked very eloquently there about how it had made you feel empowered, really, I suppose, um, from a kind of everyday circumstance situation. What difference would you say it's made? I say it's made a huge difference because, um, for example, Fina, my other daughter, um, Killian's sister is 12 sometimes she feels a wee bit like her nose is out of joint so I get to spend a wee bit of time with her for example when when Killian's away with Rhonda um, I also find that like, she's had Fiona's had support herself um, with the siblings group um, I think it's given Killian so much more confidence where Whereas before Killian was extremely clingy to me, he's not so much now. He's he's finding his own independence a wee bit more. He's doing a lot more for himself. He's, which has also helped us as a family. To now there's still, you know, things that are are tough in some areas, which. But his understanding's getting better since moving schools as well. That's been a big boost. Has, has been it? a huge boost. Yeah. And Positive Futures helped me with all that. And the outreach support from Rhonda is, means Killian has 
there's more interests, you know, and like the basketball and the going away. Like the, Killian does not like anybody picking him up from school except for me. And that's just a massive big boost to get into the car with somebody else outside of school is a massive leap forward. And that might seem to any other parent as sure it's only somebody else picking him up from school. That for Killian was a massive, massive leap forward. That for me was a massive leap forward. That for a sister was a massive leap forward because it took a lot for Killian to do that. And that's trust as well. Now, I'm sure Rhonda will say this, you know, it, there was weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks where there just wasn't any movement. Um, and it's Rhonda's baby steps, as Rhonda would say, it, baby steps. It, it was starting off, you know, as maybe there's days, and that's not that's not just Rhonda, that's with everybody. There's days that Killian just decides he doesn't want to do anything and nothing's going to change. And that's the way it is. But there was baby steps. That Rhonda was very patient, uh, very understanding. And whenever Kelly was on a day like that, Rhonda said, maybe we'll just leave it for today or maybe we'll do a half an hour and we'll see how it goes. But the patience has paid off and now it's starting to really, I notice a massive difference. It does take Kelly and time to build up trust with anybody. and But I, I find it even since this getting the support from Positive Futures that in other areas of his life he's starting to talk, even to here today, he's starting to talk a wee bit more, which is, I'm so proud of him, you know. And as a parent, that's a huge thing to see your child who, who you've seen struggling a lot in his, in his short wee life so far. To see that wee bit of confidence and to see I can do this thing. I can do this. It's a massive thing and it's it's a massive thing as a parent too to see the pride and see and to see the the like I don't know how to describe it the pleasure in their wee eye, in his wee eyes that he's he's did something. You know, he enjoyed his basketball last week and he interacted with other children, which was also fantastic. And they, as Rhonda said, were the same as him. You know, and sometimes Killian thinks he's the only person like this, you know, but he's not. And there's other people with extra needs out there. And that also helps his understanding of himself as well. Was it nice to meet the other boys, Killian, and to to, to meet new friends? Yeah. Um, I know one thing for sure is... This evening or whenever um, this is on the radio, then um, Mummy will be ringing everyone in the family just to um, just to go snuggle up in the car and turn on BBC Radio. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say Mummy would be ringing everybody in Enniskillen. She probably would. <laughs> Rhonda, Trisha was talking about the baby steps and the patience that you you need when was that something you anticipated whenever you whenever you changed to this role um i know i know it was going to be working with children so i told me be working with children um i have worked with children from the age we do up to age 2 up to the age of 14 um so i have a wide variety sometimes you, some need more patience than other others but it's not really it hasn't been hard with Killian. Killian is, I mean, he's so artistic and when we do something together, it's great and it always turns out perfect. Um, and like I say, these days that you have off days, we all have days that are off days and we think, well, I don't feel like doing something today. And that's OK. It's OK to be like that. So for me, it wasn't so much patience. I understood that he didn't feel like doing something that day. And just to be understood means a lot for a child, just for to let them know, I understand how you're feeling. And we don't have to do this today, you know. And I think it's not so much patience as just being understanding. And how how do you all work together to get the best for Killian and for his family? Well, at, at Positive Futures, we have a team. Um, we have the family support worker, which is myself. 
then we have an activities coordinator, and then we have the manager. So the way we would work, I'm obviously the person on the ground, so I go out and I meet the kids, and I try do my best to identify things that they would, they'd like to do, activities that they would like to talk with them and find out what their interests are. And then I go back then and feed that back to my manager and the activities coordinator. So then the activities coordinator, she starts planning, making a plan of when we're going to do these certain things. And um, then the manager obviously looks at the other things, if there's any other needs that we need to look into, any other factors that needs to be looked at. And they do a plan. So we have a wee, a small plan at the beginning, which changes all along because we try to meet the child's needs as we're working along. And um, we had we identified with Kelly in that it was his social skills that wanted he wanted mum wanted him to be out and to meet more people. And um, and we knew that he loved arts and crafts, and we found out that he loved basketball. And so as soon as I found out, I thought, I know where we're going. I think we should go and have a game of basketball. So then I fed that back through to my manager and through to the activities coordinator. And then she put that in place and got the wee game sorted out with the other supports. And um, that's how that come about. So we all work as a team um, and we all discuss. It's nothing set in stone. We change as we go along, as the child needs. We work at the child's pace. And we work along with mum and that's that's our way forward. Well, it seems to be working very well for everybody at the moment. Are you hoping that you'll get to play a bit more basketball, Killian? What, what about the summer? What do you like to do then? Um, in the summer, probably play basketball, cook, do origami and, hmm, look like play tag or something or tip the can with Fina and Mummy. And you look forward maybe to spending some more time with your new friends? Um, yeah. That would be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's always nice to have friends that you can spend a bit of time with and have a bit of a laugh, isn't it? Yeah. And can you beat them at basketball too? Uh, yeah. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> Better still. That was like 10 million years in a row. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me you, have you enjoyed this today coming and having a chat and meeting Niall our sound engineer and seeing the studio and so on yeah do you think you might do this when you grow up um, probably not it looks confusing <laughs> <laughs> you're right there so you're going to stick to being a chef when you grow up then yeah. are you everything I see here is just wires and buttons and all but it's been good crack, hasn't it? Yeah. Well, we've really enjoyed hearing from you and um, we think it's terrific that you've found the time between your cooking and your basketball and the origami to come and have a bit of a chat with us. So mm. thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. He's a great young fellow, Tricia. I can see why you're so proud of him. And um, Thanks, Wendy. Are you hoping that this this will continue and that maybe... It'll give you a bit more time to yourself as well. Yeah, I know Killian, Killian doesn't have an awful lot of time left with Positive Futures. Um, I think just till June, I think it's at Rhonda. Um, but I think just to get the... It's almost like it's got him to start off. He's got He's going to secondary school now in September, which I'm terrified about, but we're... I I feel now is the right time that he's just we're getting him more confident for going going to school in September, um because it's a, it's a it's a whole new set of challenges obviously bigger place, him new people, but he does know one wee friend going there, but I think our conf his confidence has come up that wee bit more. Like this was a big thing today, and. Big thing for everybody. Big thing yeah. for everybody. I was terrified. <laughs> so, but he did really well and I'm very proud of him. And I just, you know, I think I would, I really would like to thank Positive Futures for everything. And I hope they get go from strength to strength to support other children and other families in, our, in the position we were in as well. Well, we've really enjoyed hearing your stories today, uh, 
Thank you, Tricia. Thank, thank you, you, Killian. And so thank you, Rhonda, no all of you for coming along uh, and joining in our podcast for Care to Chat. That's great. Thank you, thank Wendy. You. Thank you. This has been Care to Chat, a podcast by the Northern Ireland Social Care Council. Please do subscribe and rate us. You can find the whole series wherever you get your podcasts. And do tell your friends and colleagues. Thanks for listening. Thank you.